lovely audience thank you good morning one and all esteemed industry leaders distinguished guests respected faculty members and my dear friends on behalf of the entire spjmr family i the vijayan i aditi chaudhary welcome you to samavesh 2018 Samavesh is SPJMR's annual Industry Academia Symposium. The event is organized by the students of the Postgraduate Man Program in Management. It is a platform for eminent thought leaders from industry and academia to discuss and debate contemporary issues in the fields of consulting, information management, marketing, finance, and operations and supply chain management. Before we begin, we request all of you to please put your cell phones on silent mode for the duration of the event. and continue promoting samavesh on social media platforms using the hashtags as a tradition at spjmr we commence all suspicious events with a ceremonial lighting of the lamp i invite our dean dr banerji professor premchand rani chairperson pgpm at spjmr our alumnus mr s satish and all the esteemed panelists and our fellow classmates abhishek gautam and divya bala subramanian to please come on stage and light the lamp the boss boy guys Thank you everyone. May I please request our dean Dr. Anjan Banerjee to please address the audience. So uh, respected industry leaders and guests, our own esteemed faculty members, staff members, and the entire team that has put this event together and last but definitely not the least uh, our own students who are here today uh, with enthusiasm and energy i think that we, we one can feel the applause um, welcome to this conclave and uh, i think my role in the next 10 minutes or so is to give you a sense of the institute what we are trying to do at the institute and where a conclave like this fits in terms of the direction that we are trying to take at the institute so uh, the mission of spjmr has been to influence practice and promote value based growth uh, now what does influencing practice means uh, there are many ways in which a management institute influences practice uh, the first way it influences practice is by preparing practitioners or future practitioners who are aware of current practice well rooted in theory and therefore a are ready to hit the ground running in terms of going back to industry uh, but much more importantly also to shape new practices in industry that would be the second first dimension the second way in which we influence practice is through things like executive education when uh, when people who are working come to us for various programs where again we are bringing theory and practice into the classroom the third way of influencing practice is we need to help shape the mental models of people in industry uh, because industry itself is facing challenges where it needs to think adapt new models and innovate on a day to day basis now for that influencing practice two to three things are needed we cannot influence something if we do not understand it so if you look at indian industry indian industry is increasingly try to compete on a global platform a lot of our practices are cutting edge a lot of our leaders are going global uh, the proportion of indian global ceos is on the up if you look across companies 
So there is a lot for us to understand by just understanding what Indian industry is doing. So a, a first part of uh, influencing practice is understanding practice. The second part of influencing practice is research, application oriented research, where we go to industry and say what is it that you are doing and what are the challenges that you are facing and how can we build a theoretical lens to this. If you look at management education originally, uh, the original theories of management education, people like Frederick Taylor, people like Peter Drucker, people like Alfred Sloan, it came from practice. They were practitioners who had spent considerable time in industry and then came to academics. That is the model of SPJMR also as an institute. As an institute, we are not so much taking fresh PhDs, but we are taking a lot of senior practitioners who come in, uh, then they do PhDs, then they get oriented to academics. So this balance between academia and practice is very much at the heart of the way we run the institute. Now, how are we looking at the conclave like this? Uh, to me, a conclave like this is about academia and practitioners talking together about issues that confront them. But if all you do is talk, then it is of no use. So out of the discussions from this, there must be partnerships. What are the dimensions of these partnerships? There must be people who come and teach in our programs. There must be areas which we need to go and explore with you in terms of executive education. There must be areas where we look at, okay, you're doing something good, can we build case studies? Okay, there are problems you're facing, how can we use current theory to look at those problems differently? So conclaves like this, to our mind, are a beginning. They are a beginning of influencing practice, but they are important catalysts in this process of influencing practice. Uh, what kind of examples can I give you? Um, so, for example, one very interesting example is around our, something like seven to eight years back, this whole concept of design thinking came in. The concept of design thinking was not new. It had been taught in design schools across the world. But what happened is that it moved from the design school to the business school that slowly it moved from being a department in design to being something that influenced management practice. And over a period of time, this concept of design thinking has moved to the point where design thinking is being used for organizational design, it's being used for change management, it's being used for human relations. So it has become a management concept. It is today at the point where if I take 50 companies, 35 are talking about design thinking. Unfortunately, when something becomes a fad, many people who are talking about it don't understand it. So there is a role of academics. Our role is to simplify, translate, explain, work with you to implement in different domains and through that domain rebuild our own understanding of design thinking itself. This applies for many concepts. This is, this is one clear thing. I think the second dimension that is interesting to note is that there was a time where technology was a business function. There was a department called IT and technology, right? I, I don't think that's the state today. There is a business function called technology, but technology is now embedded in every business function. So today you can't have a consultant, you can't have a marketing guy, who can't have a finance guy who says, I'm a finance guy, I don't understand technology. Because if you don't understand technology, you are already less effective as a finance guy itself. So silos are blurring. The ability to connect is becoming far more important. And therefore, uh, the role of a conclave like this is to discuss these challenges. Because even when you look at business today, I don't think business has the answers, all the answers. What is technology going to do to jobs? Are we just going to react to technology or are we going to decide how we want to leverage technology? Uh, there is something in research called the human technology gap. What the human technology gap says that if you look at history, there was a time when technology was growing, but man's ability to learn technology was also growing with it. Today, in the last 10 years, this human technology gap has widened. And what does this mean? What it means essentially is that you cannot learn technology fast enough. No matter who you are, you cannot keep pace with everything that is happening in technology. So more than ever, we need to select. 
we need to say what are the technologies that are relevant to my decision making what are the technologies i need to master what are the technologies i need to work with somebody else on okay so this is one dimension and uh, finally maybe i'll leave you with this last one thomas friedman has written a book called thank you for being late are you aware of the concept of thank you for being late so essentially what happens is we are all leading very busy lives right so when we are leading very busy lives very often you will find that you have three people who meet at a coffee shop and one of them comes late and the first thing you do when you come late for a meeting is you apologize you say i'm sorry i had a mobile phone call i had a meeting i had an international call and there are a number of good reasons and one of the reasons is that you were sloppy and indisciplined okay but uh, thomas friedman's thing is that whenever somebody comes late my first response is thank you for being late because i was now alone in a coffee shop with nobody and i got half an hour to reflect more than ever before the times are getting busier the horizons are getting shorter so the need for reflection and conversation is where the influence of practice starts i hope these next few days will be that reflection and conversation that we need to influence practice and catalyze the influence of practice thank you Thank you sir thank you so much we now request pgpm chairperson professor prem chandrani to please address the audience dean banerji uh, distinguished speakers my faculty colleagues and my very dear students Good morning everyone and I'm glad that uh, we are meeting here today for a very interesting two days uh, of samavesh. The literal meaning of samavesh is assimilation. It's about getting together and gathering thoughts and that's what we are going to do over the next two days. You have people from industry, we have people from academia who are going to be sitting across and talking uh, about issues and topics that are current and relevant and of course it's not just them it's also all of us in the audience as well and I, i think it's more important that we actually get the audience to participate actively in this whole assimilation of knowledge and thought which i term samavesh so samavesh is presented as an industry academia conclave the idea is to get people from industry to come and share what is actually happening in the world outside sharing of practices sharing of the way things are getting done but also sharing concerns sharing information or thoughts on what they do not have an answer for us yet and it's also an opportunity for academia to learn what's happening in the industry outside but at the same time sharing of thoughts of what is in the thought leadership space what's happening in the cutting edge area and therefore is there something which businesses can take with them uh, at the end of of a conclave like this so it's a win win situation for both industry and academia to be here you know for a conclave like samavesh Samavesh is brought to us all of us every year by the students of PGPM. PGPM is the full form is postgraduate program in management. PGPM program at SPGMR is now in its 15th year. We have already had 14 batches that have uh, you know graduated from the portals of this of this college of the school actually out here. SPGMR is known to all of you and uh, you know some of you are alums of SPGMR I want to talk a little bit more about the PGPM program okay so the PGPM program is an AICT approved program which has got a one year full time residential component 
which is preceded by three months of blended and, and web learning, actually. It can be perceived to be what some people call a career accelerator. The idea was generated from the fact that there was a realization many years ago that industry needed talent at mid-management level to be able to really accelerate their own growth and their own strategy to be implemented. The reason was that in industry, many people join from different functions, like engineering or finance, like CAs or engineers, who do very well in the particular silos in which they're actually operating. But as they grow up in the organization, they need to have a better understanding of what's happening across the organization. This was one of the needs that the PGPM program is trying to fulfill. And has been there for a while right now. So what does the PGPM program actually do? Okay, it helps you develop skills and, and the competencies that are really required at the mid-management level, but which are also required as you grow in the organization to senior levels, actually. Okay, so the program helps you enhance your functional knowledge. At the same time, it gives you an option, it gives you a chance, not an option, but a chance, actually, to look at what happens cross-functionally. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's, as we just heard a little while back, that there is nothing which you could say is siloed. We cannot say IT department any longer because, you know, information technology is embedded. But so is finance. So is marketing. Okay? Because you may be a finance person who's primarily doing what you call work in the corporate finance area, for example, but you need to understand what's happening in the marketing space or what's happening in the IT space to be able to do your own function better. Okay? So the cross-functional understanding and knowledge is something which uh, we try and I hope successfully to inculcate among all the students in the PGPM program. We also believe strongly that there is a need not only to just learn those concepts but to apply them. And therefore, we do have many activities that actually help help uh, the students work with organizations, work with closely with industry, to see how those concepts that they're actually learning do get applied in the real world. What they learn in the process is that there are various dots in an organization, and how do you connect those different dots? Because only when you're able to do so are you able to see the whole picture. And unless you see the whole picture, you would not be in a position to actively contribute to the well-being of the organization for whom you're actually working. We are also hoping that when you leave the school, you would have learned to learn. Because learning to learn is something which we strongly believe in. And so we're not just preparing you for the immediate jobs that you take after you complete the course or the program, but that you have the ability to keep reinventing yourself and as time changes, as business landscape changes, as things change across. Samavesh 2018, of course, is presented to all of us by the PGPM class of 2018. This batch of students has curated this program and conceptualized it, and they are the authors of what we see out here on the board behind us. I would like to briefly share with all of you some facets of this batch of 2018. I found them to be very vibrant. They are engaged actively in all the activities that are happening, not only in the program, but many at the Institute as well. They're enthusiastic and energetic, but very importantly, they are willing to learn. They have a lot of curiosity. They come and ask questions. I think that's, that's very important, because unless you have curiosity, you would not actually be able to learn anything. 
Learning comes through curiosity. I have observed that they have a, a willingness to be working very hard. I have not heard a single complaint so far about, you know, so much work to be done, or the workload is, can we do something about that? You know, they're always willing and ready to, to work hard and put in their very best as they go forward. They are team players. We do a lot of group work and we see them working together in teams. Okay, um, they are self-starters, they are contributors. These are the words that I, I think about when I think about them. But what I also find is that they do take time to do things which are beyond the natural curriculum as well. One of the things which PGPM has been doing, or PGPM batches have been doing in the previous years, and this continues this year, is music. There is a band of PGPM called the Cutting Chai. And the band was formed many years ago. And we thought when the band was first formed that after some period of time, you know, we would not perhaps have enough uh, people with relevant talent to be able to continue the band. But I'm very happy to say that, you know, the band has successfully transcended different batches. And even this year, we see them actively involved. Uh, they have got, uh, you know, a photography club, a speak-up club, and many other activities that go beyond just the classroom. Uh, this batch has an average of seven years of experience with about one and a half years of international experience. And they come from diverse backgrounds from many different companies. And this provides a very rich atmosphere for you know, peer to peer learning in the classroom, but a lot of discussions happening outside the classroom as well. The theme of Samavesh, as you all can see, is uh, going digital, changing the way of doing business. There was considerable debate before this theme was selected. But I think this theme is very relevant. Today, we are seeing the world changing rapidly. And every enterprise is feeling the impact of, of being, you know, of the digital wave, one may say so. We believe that the PGPM program at SPJMR actually has an opportunity to fill that space which is missing at the moment, which is to be digitally savvy. We want to ensure that our courses have digital embedded in them. We want to make our students, and we believe we are doing so, future ready. Okay, and therefore the selection of the theme was relevant and most appropriate. It's, it's concurrent, it's current, it's contemporary. So we have uh, five conclaves under the banner of Samavesh. We start off with the consulting conclave, which is going to be launched in a few minutes from now, followed by information management and finance conclave today, and tomorrow we would have the operations supply chain conclave, and the concluding conclave would be marketing. The topics for each of these conclaves would be different, but the overall theme is exactly what you see out there about how to go digital. We will be having many speakers from industry, who will be sharing the thoughts with us. There's a lot that we need to learn and understand and contribute. I wish Samavesh all success and welcome you here today. Thank you.